Yeah. Yeah. Last two tops. Yeah. Hey everyone, uh, thanks for staying with us. So unlike Jamie, I decided to go for the really immature title. <laughs> I'm sure we've all seen these ads online. Um, you know, doctors hate them, but one weird spice that can help cure the common cold. It doesn't work, but it's spammy, it's annoying, it gets in your way. So what I'm going to be talking about is spam and social media, and how they sort of interact. And the idea for this talk came about through uh, the company I work for. I work for Relax Payments, and we're a very social company. We do a lot of interaction with our clients using Twitter and Facebook, and we had a real need to figure out how to lock these accounts down, and how to make sure that we weren't ruining our reputation by uh, somebody logging into our Twitter and trying to sell the latest diet pill fad or something. But because we're such a social company, we noticed that a lot of the businesses who were using us to process payments were also very social companies, so we thought maybe we can make this into a talk to tell them how to interact with their customers safely. And then I realized there's a lot of crossover between business and personal account safety online, so it's pretty much applicable to everyone. And social media can be a great tool for interacting with people, either you to talk to businesses or businesses to talk to you online, but it can also go horribly, horribly wrong. And I'm going to show you a quick example of what can go wrong. If you run the Twitter account <laughs> for one of the biggest fast food chains in the world, don't set your password to Whopper123. <laughs> Someone's going to figure that out. So accounts are pretty valuable. And there's a lot you can do with an account. And I think personal accounts are a lot more valuable than business accounts. Because the Burger King hack that I showed you on the last slide, that account was suspended within a couple of hours. And they had the account back um, by the end of the next day. But personal accounts take a lot longer to recover. The Twitter security team aren't going to be jumping all over it as soon as you start talking about uh, Vine followers or sending out some link to a website that looks like CNBC. So spammers look into these sort of websites to try to get more followers, to make their videos go viral, to try to link people to dodgy websites that might try and install viruses or malware. Or sometimes they might just want to send you messages on Facebook and say, hey, I saw you in this photo, it must be really embarrassing, and link you to some random website that then asks you for your password. So the phishing can lead to scams as well. So, hey, Facebook user, please log in because your account's about to be destroyed. HSBC stuff, or my favorite one, is my credit card stolen.com. <laughs> <laughs> Type in your credit card number, your name, your expiry date, and I'll tell you whether or not it's been stolen. <laughs> it definitely will be. <laughs> Twitter has an especially bad reputation for uh, letting accounts be hijacked and letting people break into your accounts. Mm -hmm. And this is a quick Google search I've done for uh, Twitter brute force. And brute force is trying password after password to try to log into a certain account. Up until very recently, Twitter didn't have any sort of lockout on accounts. You could try as many passwords as you wanted, and the person who actually owns the account wouldn't be notified. It's a little different with your email. If you try more than four or five wrong passwords, your account gets locked and you have to enter a captcha that really difficult to read, squiggly line stuff, before you're allowed to log in. And Twitter doesn't have that, and you can see somebody had a single character username, which they're apparently offered 50 grand for at one stage, stupidly didn't take it, a couple of years later, their account was hacked into and stolen by somebody. Now, they eventually got it back, but it just shows that there's a lot of value in a lot of people targeting these accounts. This guy in the bottom corner is called Matt Honan, and he writes for Wired.com, I think. He had his Amazon account hacked initially. Then from his Amazon account, they're able to get the last four digits of his credit card number, which let them into his Apple account. His Apple account had his mail, so that led him into his Twitter account, and also set up as a backup for his other email account for Gmail. So he had all of his emails deleted, all of his iCloud backups deleted, his Twitter was defaced, and it was saying a lot of racist and homophobic stuff. He had huge reputational damage until he got a massive article in Wired explaining the whole thing. 
So the first thing I'm going to talk about isn't something with the technical solution. It's purely smarts. It's something about oversharing. And there's nothing you can really do to